Hi, and welcome to another presentation from Your Business Tutor. Learning your way, anytime, anywhere. As we have discussed previously, as important as profitability is to a business, it is not the be all and end all of financial performance. In fact, as we will find out in this second presentation on ratio analysis, looking at liquidity and efficiency ratios as well will provide us with a much fuller picture of an organization's performance. Okay, so what are we going to learn in this presentation? Well, first of all, we're going to find out what liquidity and efficiency mean. Then we're going to look at liquidity ratios a business uses. And then finally, we're going to look at the efficiency ratios a business uses. Okay, let's get started by asking, what do liquidity and efficiency mean? Whilst most people understand the concept of profitability, it would be fair to say that the terms liquidity and efficiency are less well known. This is why before going on to look at ratios in these areas, it is important to define what both terms mean. First, liquidity is a concept that looks at how able a business is to pay its debts as they fall due. In other words, how much readily available cash does a business have to pay its bills? Efficiency, on the other hand, looks at how well a business uses its resources. Put another way, how good or how able is a business to generate income from its assets? Okay, so with that now defined, let's move on to look at our first liquidity ratio by asking, what is the current ratio? The current ratio measures how able a business is to pay its short-term debts called current liabilities using its short-term resources called current assets. Put another way, it identifies if a business has enough cash to pay its bills as they fall due. How this ratio is calculated is by comparing a business's current assets to its current liabilities. So, as can be seen, when current assets equal £10,000 and current liabilities £5,000, the current ratio would be 2 to 1, which in simple terms means a business has £2 to pay every £1 it is due to others. Now, although this ratio of 2 to 1 is seen as an ideal situation, as a business can comfortably pay its debts, it is still important to compare the ratio to other years. However, as we are about to find out, understanding when the current ratio is good or bad is a little more refined than previous ratios we have looked at. For example, if the following year the current ratio fell to 1 to 1, this would indicate a worsening position, as it now only has £1 of current assets available to pay every £1 of current liabilities due. On the other hand, if the ratio increased to 3 to 1, this would also raise concerns as now the business would have too much readily available cash to pay its bills. What this tells us is that there is a range somewhere between 1.5 to 1 and 2.5 to 1 which indicates a good current ratio position. Whereas anything below that suggests a business with liquidity problems and not enough cash to pay its bills, and anything above that, a business with too much cash, sitting idle, that should be invested. OK, so now we know the range over which the current ratio is good. That still leaves us with a couple of questions, which are what causes the ratio to change and then how do you improve it? For example, as can be seen from the financial information provided, the current ratio has worsened from 2 to 1 in year 1 to 1 to 1 in year 2. Further still, this deterioration is because in year 2 the level of current assets has fallen to £7,000 and the level of current liabilities has increased also to £7,000. Knowing this is important as what it shows is that two factors, current assets and current liabilities, both influence the current ratio and an organisation's liquidity position. Further still, it means that to improve the business's present situation, it could either improve its current assets position, for example by increasing how much inventory or cash it is holding, or increasing how many customers it sells to on credit, or alternatively, it could lower its level of current liabilities 
by reducing its bank overdraft or by paying suppliers it had purchased from on credit. OK, let's now turn to our second liquidity ratio and ask what is the acid test ratio? The acid test ratio is a stricter form of the current ratio in that it measures how able a business is to pay its short term debts called current liabilities using only current assets that can be easily converted into cash. Put another way, it identifies if a business has enough cash to pay its bills as they fall due, using only readily available cash. What this means, as the formula shows, is that inventory, the hardest current asset to convert into cash, is deducted from current assets before being compared to a business's current liabilities. As such, when current assets minus inventory equals 6,250 and current liabilities equals £5,000, the current ratio would be 1.25 to 1. Which in simple terms means a business has £1.25 of readily available cash to pay every £1 it is due to others. Now, although this ratio of 1.25 to 1 indicates current liabilities are just covered, it is seen as being acceptable because only readily available cash is included in the formula. Nevertheless, as before, to get a fuller picture of how good or bad the acid test ratio is, it must be compared to other years. For example, if the following year the acid test ratio fell to 0.75 to 1, this would indicate a worsening position, as it now only has 75 pence of readily available cash to pay every £1 of current liabilities due. On the other hand, if the ratio increased to 2.5 to 1, this would also raise concerns, as now the business would have too much readily available cash to pay its bills. What this tells us is that, as with the current ratio, there is a range somewhere between 1 to 1 and 2 to 1, which indicates a strong acid test ratio position. Whereas anything below that suggests a business with liquidity problems and not enough cash to pay its bills, and anything above that, a business with too much cash sitting idle that should be invested. Okay, so now we know the range over which the acid test ratio is good. That still leaves us with a couple of questions, which are, what causes the ratio to change? And then, how do you improve it? OK, so looking at the financial information provided, it can be seen that the asset test ratio has worsened from 1.25 to 1 in year 1 to 0.75 to 1 in year 2. Further still, this deterioration is due to two reasons. First, the current assets minus inventory figure has fallen, and second, the current liabilities value has increased. This means, as with the current ratio, that two factors influence the acid test ratio. As such, if a business can improve its current assets minus inventory position by holding more cash, increasing how many customers it sells to on credit, or reducing its level of inventory, the acid test ratio will improve. Similarly, if it can lower its level of current liabilities by reducing its bank overdraft or by paying suppliers it had purchased from on credit more quickly, the ratio will also improve. OK, let's now turn our attention to an efficiency ratio by asking what is the rate of inventory turnover? The rate of inventory turnover is a ratio which measures how often an organisation sells and replaces its inventory over a given time period such as a year. It is calculated by dividing the cost of sales by average inventory, where average inventory is found by adding inventory held at the beginning of the year to inventory held at the end of the year and then dividing by two. As such, when the cost of sales equals £80,000 and average inventory equals £10,000, the rate of inventory turnover is eight times per year. In general, this would be seen as an acceptable rate as it indicates inventory is selling well and before it goes out of date. However, 
As always, it is important to compare the ratio to other years so that a true picture of the organisation's performance can be ascertained. For example, if the following year the rate of infantry turnover fell to two times, this would indicate a worsening position, as infantry is selling more slowly, meaning too much money is tied up in stock, suggesting that some may go out of date before it is sold. On the other hand, if the rate of infantry turnover increased to 24 times, it might also raise some concerns, as although stock is selling quickly, it might mean more has to be spent on delivery because the business is not ordering enough inventory to meet demand. What this shows is that, like the liquidity ratios we looked at previously, there is a range somewhere between 6 and 18 times which indicates a good rate of inventory turnover. Ok, so that once again leaves us with two remaining questions, which are, what causes the ratio to change and then how do you improve it? As the financial information displayed shows, the rate of inventory turnover has worsened from 8 times in year 1 to 3 times in year 2. Further still, this deterioration is due to the cost of goods falling to £75,000 and average inventory increasing to £25,000 in year 2. What this demonstrates is that both these factors can influence the ratio, meaning if an organisation could do the opposite and manage to increase its cost of sales whilst at the same time reducing its average inventory, the rate of inventory turnover would increase. To achieve that situation, a business could take one of the following actions. First, sell older inventory at a discount to get rid of it. Second, run an advertising campaign to increase the sale of inventory to customers. Or thirdly, introduce better inventory management so that the business does not overstock. In fact, this final point is probably the most important way of managing this ratio, in that if a business can get the inventory levels for each item it sells right, it will find it much easier to maintain a good rate of inventory turnover. Ok, so what did we learn in this presentation? Well, first of all, we found out what liquidity and efficiency mean. Then we went on to explore liquidity ratios a business could use. And finally, we looked at the efficiency ratios a business could use. Looking at profitability, liquidity and efficiency ratios plays an important part in judging an organisation's financial performance. However, as we will find out in the next part in this series, although ratio analysis offers a number of benefits, a business must also be aware of their limitations so that the conclusions they draw from the results are not misleading.